Good afternoon, everyone. For those of you who don't know, my name is Maya Karen. I run a fashion blog called Classically Kept. It does feature luxury, contemporary, and how to style, and now natural hair care. So if you are into any of those things, please consider subscribing and click the notification bell. That way you will never miss a video. So y'all really liked the first episode of Hair Talk, and this one is very near and dear to my heart because it affects me personally. So in today's episode number two of Hair Talk, we are going to be talking about natural hair in the workplace, more so corporate America. So let's go ahead and get started. So let's start out with my work environment, of course, pre-corona. So I'm an independent adjuster. For those of you who don't know, I basically contract myself out on huge storms. Hurricane Sandy, Hurricane, Hurricane Harvey, and most recently Hurricane Ida. And I do commercial work. So let's say for instance, you own a restaurant by the name of Bob's Burgers. A storm comes through and it actually damages your property. I handle the insurance claims, okay? That is my, that is my work, that is my career. That is not what I went to school for, but that is what I have been doing since 2012. So let me explain to you the graphic or the demographics of my work environment. Of course, again, pre-corona. It was considered corporate, it was considered business casual. The demographic is white male. I would say anywhere from the ages of, I would say about 40 to about maybe 60. So the demographic is older, that is changing, but that is the average demographic of my work area. For a lot of these older white men, it is a second career. This is something that they have kind of fallen into or someone has kind of hinted their ear towards. It's a, it's a second career for a lot of them. Like I said, it is changing, but that is mainly what it is, especially when you're talking about managerial positions that's a majority of what you will see a lot of them are from Florida in the country a lot of them are from Alabama in the country a lot more I would say than Florida and Alabama a lot of them are from Tejas okay so just keep that in mind when I am a black woman with natural hair working in these office environments okay so that is my work environment and let's just really quickly go over corporate so Whenever I go on these assignments, I am never face to face with a client. I am a desk adjuster. So we have a field adjuster who will go out and actually do the inspection. They will send the paperwork to me and then from a desk, I will settle the claim. So this is not a facial interaction that I have with my client, it's just phone. So they cannot see me. However, when you are in an office, you are still expected to be business casual. So the question remains, is natural hair professional and is it business casual? I would have to say that that is also quite relative. For instance, since I do not have face-to-face -face contact with my customer, I'm, it might be a little bit more lenient depending on the actual company I'm working for and then depending on my actual IA manager. It's always business casual, but there is some leniency there. And the reason why I'm saying that is that if you are working for a Fortune 500 company or if you are a lawyer, you are not going to go into court in a head wrap. A hijab, yes, if that is, if you are a Muslim woman and you, you wear the hijab. But as a black woman, as a lawyer, are you going to go into a courtroom in a head wrap? Probably not. I am not a lawyer, but I will tell you the reason why because I have come across this as well. The reason why certain hairstyles or the reason why women do not wear certain hairstyles when it comes to certain professions it's because they will not be taken seriously. People are so focused on their hair that they're not going to take them seriously. They're going to automatically assume that when they show up or when they walk into a boardroom, they have no idea what they're talking about. And a lot of the times, especially if your hair is natural and you have it in, in, in an out state or you have it in a fro or it's out and it's loose and it's curly, um, people are automatically going to assume that you are like some militant Black Panther, like you go home and everything is about making sure that the man is not getting to you. And that's not the case. When I come home, I live the same life that every other woman in America lives, okay? So, conforming, masking, and assimilation is something that you might hear a lot of the times when it comes to Black women and hair, when it comes to having a job. So I will give you a couple of examples and I will give you a couple of experiences myself. So the first one I will give you is I went to Norfolk State, go Spartans. Um, I was an actual incoming um, 
welcome committee or kind of like a mentor for incoming freshmen. And I actually really liked the program because it was surrounded or its its base was African culture, talking about the morals and the values and things like that. We talked about everything. We talked about boys, sex, pregnancy, all of the stuff that you want to talk about that you can't talk to about your parents, but you may want to have that peer to peer interaction. And I absolutely loved that. Even though I was, even though I am an introvert, I absolutely loved that. One of the topics that would always come up when we were talking about just everything else was hair and a lot of the stories that I, that, that I was receiving. I will give you two. So there was a young lady in one of my sessions who was actually talking about herself. So over the summer, she wanted to get a job. She wanted to work at her very favorite um, retail store, which was Forever 21. She gets hired and I wanna say like she's been working there for a month. So she had never really been face to face with her actual manager. Well, this, this particular day, she wasn't going to call in. I mean, it was raining cats and dogs. She wasn't going to call in because she loved her job and she loved what she did. This was actually going to be this young woman's first interaction with her manager. So she, you know, throws on her clothes, throws on, I think she said she had like either a bonnet, a rain, a rain cap, or she just had an umbrella. She walks into the store and the very first encounter with her manager, she looks her up and down and she says, oh, I didn't know that your kind came out in the rain. Now, just imagine someone saying that, and she's your manager. Just imagine someone saying that to you and it's your first interaction. You're 16 years old, what do you do? I mean, you know, nowadays 16 year olds will probably let you have it, but this was several years ago. So what did she do? She clocked in and she continued to work, but that just kind of like soured her kind of like soured her feeling towards the company and kind of like working in retail. Okay, so I will give you another example. This is also from my freshman incoming mentor sessions. It was another young lady and she had heard a story of a woman. She was brought in for an interview. This was in corporate America. She was going to have facial, she was going to have facial interactions with the clients. They brought her in for the interview. They absolutely loved her. They loved her resume. They were a little shocked when she walked in. She was natural. And I think she said that, um, that her hair was like in braids or something, but it was her own hair. So they bring her in right before they want to offer her the job. And they say, listen, we can't offer you the job until you change your hair. Now, like I said before, it's called conforming and simulation and masking. So basically you're giving this woman an ultimatum. Fix your hair or we can't hire you. You don't know what this woman's situation is. Is she married? Does she have kids? Does she have an elderly parent who is dependent? Like, does she like does she have dependents? Does she have someone depending on her? Not to just take care of herself, but she might have a family to take care of. And the mere fact that you want her to change her hair to come work for you because you don't feel like it's professional or you don't feel like it would have been received very well by your clients. I, I don't like that. Um, I know that it, I know that it still happens, probably not as much, but I know it still happens. And I know that's going to be more so of your corporate corporate like business attire every single day. But to me, it's just kind of like my hair is that much of a distraction. Now I'm not talking about a natural person coming in to a the other thing is you have to read the room. That is another thing I will say. As a lawyer, is it in your best interest to have naturally curly, bright blue hair? No. As a lawyer, is it beneficial to your career to have neon pink curly hair? No. What I am referring to is a woman who is natural, who either in her natural color, whether that be brown, copper, red, whatever the natural color of her hair. That's what I'm referring to. I'm talking about a woman who doesn't really do anything to her hair. She might wear it out, she pulls it back, she might put it in a low bun, she might put it in a high bun, but it's in its natural state, or she might actually wear braids. But it's in its natural state, very neat, very well kept, her edges are laid if she's into that, and you're telling her she has to pick between feeding her family or changing her hair. Now, I do know women personally who have done this. They have said, you know what? I will buy a wig and then I'll just do me on the weekends. But should you really have to do that? Because again, we are going back to focus on my work ethic. Don't focus on my hair. Like I said, 
I'm not talking about crazy hairstyles. I'm talking about this right here, not, not the head wrap. I'm talking about my hair in its natural state right here. If my hair is pulled back in a bun, or even if I have it just in a ponytail, the ponytail might be a little big because I am natural and I do have long hair, but I don't see why that should cause me not to be able to get a job. And I know people are sitting here and you might be watching this video and you're like, does that really happen? Yes, it does. People have been brought to, to make decisions that they might not want to make simply because they need to provide for themselves and their families. Then you have the ones who are gung ho, like F you, I'm not doing it, I'll find another job. You know, to each his own. But I just, whenever, whenever I hear one of those stories, I just think to myself, like, you know, what has that person, you know, what, what did that person do to get to that interview? You know, because there are a lot of people who are on hard times right now. And then to get through all of those interviews, the strenuous questions, the drug tests, or whatever it is you have to do. And then to be sitting in someone's office and they tell you, listen, you can't work here until you change your hair. Because to be honest with you, if I need a job, my hair is the last thing that I'm thinking about. My hair is also the last thing that I'm thinking I'm going to have to change in order to get a job. Now, I will give you two examples of sometimes in the black community, we can be our own worst enemy. The first example I will give you is from a show that I absolutely love. I really wish that Amazon or somebody or Hulu or Netflix would actually just come out on the season and I could just binge watch. Binge watch. It is Living Single. I don't know if you remember the episode where we're, there was this huge situation with Kyle's hair. And basically, it was the black partner who wanted him to change his hair. So at this point in time, Kyle had kind of like a shaved head right here, and then he had like small dreads that were coming out on the top. And when he goes in for the position, his white counterparts or the two white partners were like, well, Kyle, we've already discussed this. Who brought this to your attention? And everybody just kind of pauses and looks at Lawrence, who is the black partner. And they're like, well, Lawrence, we already had this discussion. What is your issue with it? And Lawrence was just simply like, number one, I don't think it's professional. And number two, I think you are sending the wrong message to our clients. And Kyle was like, well, I think as far as our clientele is concerned, I think that they would actually appreciate the diversity. And then basically he's like, listen, I'm not changing my hair. And then Lawrence is like, well, you're making a big mistake. The two white counterparts could care less, okay? They could care less. So sometimes, like I said, in the black community, it is our own and we need to stop doing that. The second example I will give you, this was, I would probably say a couple of years once I had gotten out of college. So this was, I was anywhere from 2013 to 2015. Hampton University, who has always been in the race with Howard to talk about being the real HU. Whenever, and again, if you haven't been to college, I don't know if you haven't been on HBCU campus. I will say from my experience on Norfolk State's campus, which is Hampton follow suit. If you are a business major, you actually have to dress up business casual or in a suit if you are giving a presentation whenever you are going to your business classes. Hampton University actually put out, I think it was an article, a letter, or kind of like a bulletin for their business majors to proceed to tell them that natural hair, braids, and dreads are not professional. Again, like I said, sometimes in the black community, we can be our own worst enemy. Can you imagine after all that we had been through in the civil rights movement during and after for one of the most prestigious HBCUs in the world to put a bulletin out to their students that natural hair, dreads, braids, curls, kinks, coils, whatever, is not professional and you need to chop it off so you can get a job. That, that to me is actually worse than sometimes when we get comments from other cultures and other races, okay? So now let's kind of get into my experience as far as having natural hair in a corporate setting that is mostly Caucasian. The number one question that I always think about or the number one question that always comes up whenever I have this discussion is, have you ever felt comfortable enough to wear your hair out. I'm not talking about in my signature twist, just completely out. And the answer is no. Um, and I would probably say the reason why is that if I were to walk into 
a, if I were to walk into a contracted office and just sit at my desk with my hair out the way it looks, looking like a lion in all of my glory, I would probably not only get stares, but I would get just so many questions. And here's the thing. I have no problems with questions. Being someone from a different culture, being someone from a different race, you probably don't see it very often. I have no problems answering your questions, but this is the thing. When I explain it to you, don't harp. Don't keep coming back and asking me questions. I have already asked you questions. I have already answered your questions. If you truly don't understand, there is this wonderful search engine that has taken over the world and it's called Google. Google it. As a matter of fact, this is what I will do for you. I will give you a couple of jar I will give you a couple of words, jargon, colloquial when it comes to the natural hair community. If you are really that interested in it, and you can go look it up. I am not your white person's guide to black hair because I don't know everything. I don't know everybody's natural hair, and everybody has different natural situations going on. The second issue, which this is a whole video within itself, do not ever, and this goes for something that you learned in kindergarten, do not ever touch my hair. And when I mean kindergarten, I mean you're not supposed to put your hands on people, but do not touch my hair. So there was a situation at work, I don't remember where I was, I don't remember what situation it was, um, I don't remember what contract I was on. I was sitting at my desk, minding my own business, signing into my equipment so I could begin to handle claims. I don't forget her name. I'll just say Judy. Miss Judy comes over and she was like, can I touch your hair? Now I noticed as she was asking me the question, she was already reaching to touch my hair. So when I said no, she pulls her hair back. I mean, she pulls her hand back, but she proceeded, she proceeded to catch an attitude with me because I would not let her touch my hair. And my first very natural reaction, the first thing that I always say after no, and after someone looks so astonished that I told them no, I am not an exhibit, I am not an animal, I am not, I'm not at a petting zoo. I understand we once were, but that is not this time. But you are in my personal space, but the very fact that you felt comfortable enough to already start reaching and asking the question as if I was going to tell you yes. The audacity, okay? The audacity. My second, there are many, my second experience that I will share in this video is, y'all know that I wear my hair in mini twists. When I was on the road, I would probably say this was 2017. They weren't mini twists, but they were still twists. Whenever I was on an assignment, especially going into the office, whether my hair was out and pulled back or if it was in twists, my hair was always pulled back. Like I just said, I have never actually felt comfortable to come to work with my hair just fully out. So I can't remember if I ran an errand and I think like my bobby pins had popped or whatever type of um, apparatus that I had holding my hair back, it snapped because it was old. So I took a couple of bobby pins. I didn't have enough for a full bun. So, so I took a couple of bobby pins. Y'all have seen me with my twist in the front laying on the side and then just kind of like a twist right here. Just make sure it's out of my face. So I went into work and the stares and questions that I got were just beyond me. Like y'all see me come in here every single day with my hair pulled back in this bun. And I don't know, they thought it was fake or what, but I sit at my desk and people are literally like, cause we have cubicles, they're like, So finally, when I go to the bathroom, someone just finally says, excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, someone finally just says, well, I, I didn't, I didn't know it was like hair back there. I just kind of thought you were bald. I just walked away. I, 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 I had just gotten off the phone with a, a cussing customer. I was like, I don't have time for this. But again, it's just like, I, I, I bring it back to the comfort and, and maybe, and maybe it's, maybe it's not someone else's place to make me feel comfortable to wear my hair as naturally, to wear my hair natural as it is. But the questions and the stares and the trying to touch my hair, to alleviate all of that, I just pull my hair back without any questions. Now, they are really confused. If, if, if um, Like if I have ever been on an assignment during my birthday, y'all know I straighten my hair for my birthday. You wanna talk about confusion when on Wednesday my hair is pulled back and it's wavy and then I come to work on Thursday with my hair out, you know, looking like 
an engine or you know looking look look looking exotic or looking racially ambiguous you want to talk about confusion um this was in 2014 this was in philadelphia so i get my hair done it's my birthday i get my hair done i get straight and i'm you know walking into work it's you know fully out i'm feeling cute i walked past one of my co-workers and i was like again i don't remember his name so i'm just like good morning bob and he just kind of looks at me just keeps walking i said okay maybe bob is having a bad day Pass another co-worker. Hey, Jim. Jim looks kind of confused and keeps walking. Okay, so I sit at my desk and then here comes, um, again, I don't remember I don't remember names. So here comes Peter. So here, here's my desk and Peter is like right here with his cubicle. He looks and he does one of these. And then real loudly, he was like, who is that at Maya's desk? It's, it's still Maya's. Still Maya Karen. At that time, it was Maya Karen Stockton. But it's it's still me. Nothing's changed. It's still me. I just got my hair straightened. I, I don't say I get my hair done. I got my hair straightened because my hair is always done. My hair is done right now. Okay, so basically what this video boils down to is I definitely want to start a conversation because I know there are some crazy stories out there when you start talking about natural hair in the workplace. But this is what I want as far as my career is concerned if I ever start traveling again because all of my assignments have been at home and I tell you right now, I absolutely love it. The freedom that it gives me to just move about and do house things that I need to do instead of sitting at an office or a desk in an office for 10 hours a day. What I want is to just be able to come into work without the questions and the stares. Actually, to be honest, what I really wanna do is maybe like on a Saturday or Friday, I wanna be able to come into work with a head wrap on. Reason being, again, this is pre-COVID. Reason being is because it takes me hours to wash my hair. But if I'm on an assignment working 10, 12 hours a day, if I work from seven to seven, that doesn't leave me much time at night to fully wash and do my hair. So what I would love to do is get off work at seven, go home, start the process, and then maybe wrap my hair up during work and then come home and finish it without questions, stares, comments, questions, or concerns. That, that's, that's really what I want. Am I asking for a lot? Yes. Do I want that to happen? Yes. I just, I don't want to be judged about my hair in my workspace. I want to be judged on my work ethic and how I handle customers, my customer service, my experience. I don't want you thinking that because I came to work with two puff balls, which would never happen, but I'm just saying in general, my hair should not be a cause of concern when it comes to handling my job. Like I said in the beginning of this video, when it comes to being natural, it is a journey, it is a beautiful thing, but I am here to tell you that as a natural black woman, I don't come home, like David and I don't, whenever we, like, cause David also owns, we, he owns a trucking company. Um, when I get off work and then when he gets home from doing what he has to do at work with all of his drivers and the dispatch, we don't like sit at the kitchen table and just like start Googling like how to put it to the man. Like that's not, I, I, I don't come home every single day and just start talking about, you know, my white neighbors across the street about how they don't like me and you know, how they're a part of the man and you know, how I can let them know and I'm black, you know, I, I don't do that. Yes, I'm proud to be black, but I still live a normal life. I come home, I shop, I would say I cook, but I don't really. Um, I do laundry. Um, I, I, I do all of the normal things. They're not like seated and like white people hate. It's, it's not that. It's just that for me, for my lifestyle, for, for my purpose, I love my natural hair. And I don't think that that should be a cause of concern when it comes to work. We have come leaps and bounds, absolutely. But there is still work to do because there is still, okay, and I guess, again, corporate is also very relative because like I said, I do not do face-to-face -face -face interaction. So for me, I think it would be more feasible, maybe in a couple of years, if I return back to the office, maybe it would be feasible for me to walk in like this. I think that would be very feasible. Now, for a doctor, your hair is supposed to be pulled back. That's for sanitation, I understand that. Something white collar like a lawyer, like I said. I think that's going to take 
a little bit longer. Um, I don't think a lawyer will ever be able to walk into the courtroom or the boardroom in a head wrap. I don't know. I'm not a lawyer. You know, I don't know those, those experiences, but typically when you see a lawyer, they're very straight laced. Okay. Um, a suit with a head wrap. I don't know how that would go over with a client who is not used to seeing that or used to seeing someone in that occupation wearing that, if, if that makes sense. So for different occupations, I think it's going to take time, but for my occupation, plus some of the way these people come dressed to work is like, well, y'all are worried about me, but you need to worry about him. It's like he rolled out of bed. But that's what I'm looking for. I'm just looking for my hair not to be a topic of conversation and for us to get our work done. That's what I'm looking for. So. We are at the end of the video and I want to introduce you to something called the Crown Act. I will put it down below if you want to sign it, but basically the Crown Act when we're talking about school and when we're talking about work. It is basically a law that prohibits people from discriminating against natural hairstyles, braids, weave, I mean, um, not weaves, <laughs> braids, dreads, curly hair, froze and things like that. Like I said, I have already signed. It's been going for a few years now. There are several states that I've actually signed it into, signed it into, what is it? You signed it, now you're a bill, or you signed it. What 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 is it? You signed it, you signed it law, you signed it bill, and now you're a law, whatever, you know what I mean. Um, conjunction, junction, what's your function? I can't remember what it's for, but it's, it's that, it's, it's a law. Um, I will leave it down below so you can read it for yourself. And I think it's actually sponsored by Dove and a couple of other, um, a couple of other huge companies which I am also very happy about so like I said I have already signed it I will link it down below also you know what before I actually want to bring up a study that I found as far as hair in the workplace and I think this was actually someone's thesis for their doctorate or their thesis paper. Okay, and I'm just gonna set my computer right here so y'all don't, don't think I'm just, you know. Okay, so, yes, Marquette University, this was someone's master's thesis, it was 2009, and it's titled, My Natural Hair is Unprofessional, The Impact of Black Hairstyles on Perceived Employment Related Characteristics. I will also link this down below. But what I wanna bring your attention to is what I just finished explaining. I'm not gonna sit here and read all of this to you. I did read it, it is very insightful. I agree with a lot of the things, but I'm going to put up I'm going to snapshot it and put it up right here and we'll, we'll talk about it. I'm going to put up um, some of the things that people's assumptions were when it comes to straight hair, dreads, and I think curly hair, which should really be no surprise. Okay, so we are going to start with most frequent associations made with straightened hair. I don't know if this is percentage or a number of people, so I'm just going to put it up and we'll talk about it. So, clean. Is a 17. Everyone associates being clean with straight hair. Okay, beautiful is an 11. I would I would explain. I would expect that. Pretty is an 11. Classy is a 10. Um, fake is a nine. Neat is a six, and attractive is a five. Okay, so let's move on to most frequent associations made with dreadlocks. Okay, number forty. Um, number number one is dirty, and that's a frequency of forty-four. Drug user is twenty-four, and I will say this: it has nothing to do with. Well, it, it kind of does. Um, I am Jamaican, and when people find that out, for some reason, they feel the need to ask me whether or not I smoke weed. Okay, no, I have been no closer to Ja than you have. Okay, I do not smoke weed. Now my cousins do. I'm not gonna name names, but I know they do. Okay. Rastafarian, 21. And yes, that is a part of the culture, that is a part of the religion, but everyone who has dreads is not a Rasta, okay? Messy, number 14. This is kind of goes hand in hand with being Rastafarian for it to be, for it to be Rastafarian, for it to be fashionable. It's, it, it, depends on who, it depends on who you're talking to. A lot of Rastafarians, they don't retwist. You'll look at Bob Marley, he had dreads. They weren't unkept, but 
they were not always being refreshed, okay? Unclean is number 11. Hippie is 11. I'm assuming that's more so for white people who have dreads. Nasty is number nine. Reggae is a nine. Bob, of course. Smelly is an eight. Um, I will say this, as far as dreads are concerned, and just hair in general, if you don't wash your hair, it's going to smell. But your insinuation that it's smelly because there are dreads is silly, okay? Uh, a rebel, number eight. And to be quite honest, I'm, I'm actually quite surprised that that is not right under dirty and drug user, okay? And the last one, most frequent associations made with Afros. So number 22, or the number 22 is natural, makes sense. Wild is 16. Now, when you say wild, are you talking about like, again, or like when you say when you say wild, do you mean like it's just wild and like wild and crazy kids, or it's just wild? It's unkept. Like, what do, what do you mean when you're saying wild? Because it goes down to rebel, which we'll also discuss. So retro is 14. I understand that. Unkept. We all think, or most people think, which is I will not lie. Before becoming, before being, excuse me, before being a natural. I thought being natural, or I thought especially someone who wore an afro, I thought that was them doing the lazy thing. I am here to tell you like I have told you in most videos and more than one when it comes to my natural hair videos, being natural is nothing short of being anything lazy, okay? You do have lazy naturals, but they still have to do their hair, okay? Uh, dirty, number seven, all hair gets dirty, okay? Messy is six. There are some naturals who do roll out of bed and just leave and go out into the world. That is not me, so I could understand that. Rebel is a six, and that's what I was describing earlier when I'm not militant, I'm not, you know, everything is, you know, about the man. I'm actually quite surprised, especially, especially with Afros. I'm actually quite surprised that Rebel is not number one, okay? But you can take a look at this for yourself, and I just found it very interesting as far as, um, as far as it goes. But yeah, so that is my take on natural hair in the workplace. Um, like I said, when it comes to corporate America, everything is also relative because you have your different state, you have your different occupations. Doctor, lawyer, office without face-to-face -face interaction with your customers. I have already explained what I would love to see for my little niche or my little spot in corporate America. I don't think that's a lot to ask for, but I am here to say that I believe, not just, not just because it grows out of my head, but I think that natural hair is professional. Now I will admit to you that I will probably never go into an office with my hair just out. I don't do that on a regular, so I would never wear my hair like that to work. I just feel like it would just cause too much of a dis of, of, of a disturbance, okay? So let me know your comp, let me know in the comments what you think. Let me know some of your experiences. Let me know if you think this video is complete hogwash and you think that I'm crazy because you know what's on my head has nothing to do with me getting a job. Let me know, let's start a conversation. But here on YouTube, I do upload videos every Wednesday and Sunday. And then of course, you know right here, I'll put my Instagram handle. Thank you so much for hanging out with me, you guys. Bye.